I guess I could like persuade you to come forward. <laughs> We're missing you guys out there, by the way, in Facebook land. We promise we won't bite. <laughs> it's really good to see you guys, and it, we don't have to do this alone up here. So, thank you for being here on this glorious day. You know, we may all be feeling not quite there yet, but uh, it is indeed. And our Holy Eucharist service, right two, begins on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be your kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you, no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. light and kindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen. a reading from the book of Isaiah I will greatly rejoice in the Lord, my whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation, he has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth bring, brings forth its roots, and as a garden causes what it sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until her vindication shines out like the dawn and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindic vindication and all the kings your glory, and you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 147, as printed in your few bulletins. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He 
satisfies you with an honest plea. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters poor frost like ashes. He scatters his hail like bread crumbs. Who can stand against his cold? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To him he has not revealed his judgment. Hallelujah. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time has come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. <coughs> and because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, if a child and also an heir through God, the Word of the Lord. <coughs> According to Luke John. Glory to you, Lord God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone 
was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This is he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, when you think about all that's gone into yesterday, over, I mean, however many weeks, we're all different than that, you know, and then you get to, to Christmas, and no matter where you are, there's some kind of chaos happening uh, of some sort, family, all those fun things, uh, but it's also bittersweet because you're also, you know, I was so mindful of the people that were no longer with us, you know, I was thinking of my mother and my sisters and, you know, but also joyous with the grandchildren, and I mean, there's always that kind of reality that comes with Christmas Day. And when you're around kids, right, there's all the slinging and all the tearing of all the paper going everywhere, and then just like that, it's done, right? The dishes are piled, right? Everybody's sleeping, or, or wanting to, uh, and it's done, and it's, it's over. And we're all like, oh, thank speed of God. <laughs> it is done, right? But now what? You know? Now what? Because in, in the, the true reality, you know, the true trueness of the, in the spirit of what Christmas is about, it really is just the beginning. You know, Christmas is the beginning for us. Well, I admit, really, that Christmas is like it's gotten real now, you know? I don't know about you, I've only had one child, but boy, you know, it wasn't real till it was real, and there, there he was, you know. 
and it was like a whole different reality at that point. Because uh, you could fantasize about it that whole nine months, you know, but boy, when that baby's born, it's real. <laughs> Crying in the middle of the night. All that stuff is real. And, you know, the changing of the dirty diapers and all those fun things that Mary is doing after that birth. Because at some point, those shepherds are going to leave. The star moves on. The, you know, the animals do their animal things. And it's back to normal. And they go on back home and, and live their lives. But it's not normal. And that's true for us too. It's not normal. It's not, it's no, it's not about what we just go on now, right? We are reminded once again in our, you know, uh, cycle that we go through our church cycle year, that this is the time when we are really reminded of the foundation of who we are and whose we are. And uh, of what it means that the light has been born into the world. That, you know, that there is a light that is shining and darkness will not overcome it. Obviously, Jesus, a person named Jesus, is not walking the earth as the Son of God. We are the sons and daughters of God who are walking the earth to shed, share the light. It is, it is now us that are the hands and feet of that light. And we lost a, a huge light in our world. Desmond Tutu, Tutu passed away. And uh, everyone knows who he is. Uh, and when I think of, you know, those who are kind of the icons of the faith who we look to as, you know, look at how they shine that light, you know, he's one of those, for me anyway. And I, you know, my heart grieves the loss. I mean, I, you know, it is the way of life, just as for every human being, if you didn't know that. Uh, but it's still hard when it happens. And we think of what they leave us you know, what, what people leave us, what light do they leave that we are then carrying on as well from what they have showed us, what they have, they, you know, their example, their, their love, what love they left in the world. Um, and sometimes we even learn by people who, you know, um, we think by their life was, no, there was no light. But even they, and the assumptions we make, because we don't know how God sees them, I would contend very differently, but they offer us something that helps us to think differently in a way that, yeah, they're gonna challenge me to, to shine brighter, shine brighter so that, I, so that I don't sink into despair or sink into those places that are really hard um, and let it overtake me. Because we are told today in John that, you know, the light is here and darkness isn't going to overcome it. And so when we judge that, that this is darkness and there's no light, uh, we're, we need to pull back our scripture and, and ask ourselves some different questions. Uh, because the reality is, is that we are the ones called to be that light. And not all of us can be Desmond Tutu. But we can be who we are, where we are. And I really am a big believer that we were all created with unique gifts and skills that need, needed to be in this world at this time to shine the light of God uh, wherever we can. And with all the gifts and all the skills and everything we have at our disposal, being who we are in our personalities, sharing that light, sharing God's love, sharing in any way we can with whatever we have. No matter where, what station, I say to the poor, you have gifts to give to the world. The sick, you have gifts. You know, I've said this to people in the hospital bed over years. You're laying here, yes. You have people coming and going all day. You know, how do you shine your light there? And it's amazing the people that do that. You know, because we can get so uh, holed up into our own little, you know, 
world that we think it's just our pain and our suffering and our grief, but it's not, because we all go through those things. Even those experiences are gifts we get. There are opportunities to once again share the light of God with another who is suffering. And so I came across this, you know, you've heard of Howard Thurman. And he wrote this piece called The Mood of Christmas. When the song of the angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To bind the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among people, to make music in the heart. And let us stand and continue with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Using the prayer on page 383 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray for the church and for the world. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world and for the welfare of the Holy Church of God and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Tolson, our bishop, Daniel, bishop of Uruguay, Tammy, our priest, and Bobby, our deacon, and the clergy and people of the Diocese of Oklahoma. In the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for St. Andrew Stillwater, OSU Campus Ministry, and St. Paul's Church, Progreso, Uruguay, and for all bishops and other ministers and all clergy and people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For our President Joe, our Governor Kevin, our Mayor Randy, the Governor of the Chickasaw Nation Bill, and for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. For this city of Ada, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, for the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, and for all the blessings of this life, especially for those in our parish cycle of prayer, Deanna Compton, Bonsil Conway, and Tom and Darlene Cox Crabtree, for those celebrating birthdays this week, Don Ryden and Carson Taylor. For those celebrating anniversaries, Michael and Errol Hughes, and Christine Tapas, 
and Shirley Nixon. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. And we pray that we have, may have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widows and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, for those serving our country at home or abroad, and we also pray for our veterans, especially those still struggling with wartime wounds, let them feel your comfort and healing grace. We pray for those who are in hospitals, for those who need healing. Mary Criswell, Joyce DeBauer, Mike Lefeder, Maya Walker, Larry Bouchon, Diane West, Tanya Elder, John Elliott, River Northcutt, Mike Jackson, Kelly Joe Pickard, Patty Buchanan, Doug Boucher, Margie Beck, Marie Montin, Montin, Craig Kincaid, Tyler Brown, Donna Albritton, Jack Long, Dorothy Santa, Santi, and Terry Morgan. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Desmond Tutu and all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may end our days we mend our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of St. Luke and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Continuing on page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, words, and deeds, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbor as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Again, welcome. It's just a delight that you're with us today. Uh, not a whole lot uh, yet. We have more things that will be coming up uh, for in the new year. Can you believe it's the new year? No. <laughs> but do mark uh, the 8th because we will have our uh, return. I understand it's a return of an annual epiphany party at the Cody's on the 8th at 6. Bring a dish. Uh, and they're gonna have chili, I believe, yeah. So, something to compliment that, plan to have fun, and pray for good weather. 
we'll see how long we keep this, but it's pretty amazing. Anything else anybody wants to? Did everybody have a good Christmas? Ellie, did you have a good Christmas? Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> She's on it. <laughs> in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Prayer B on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ your only Son to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation. In the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. He, when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacraments of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Luke and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now in our Savior Christ has taught us we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ was born and died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Thank you.
strong voice, but oh, I'm yes. obviously oh, mistaken. No, no. Okay. All right. So, hi everybody. And live video. Who was the little girl? And.